One of the biggest stories of the year just slipped by and everyone's acting like it's no big deal. In England's three biggest cities, Manchester, Birmingham, London, white British people are now officially in the minority. I'm sorry, but is that not some kind of landmark event? The white British population of England's capital city stands at just 36.8%. In the city of Leicester, the white population went from 71% in 1991 to just 40% in 2021. Overall, less than 75% of the population of England and Wales is now white British. And one in six people living in England and Wales were born in a different country. I mean, all I can say is thank God diversity's a strength, right? Right? The BBC talked to a resident in Leicester who confidently reassured them. I feel privileged being in a city that holds so much diversity and inclusivity as well. Bruh. Leicester is the most harmonious city in all of Europe. I take pride that we helped contribute something. Harmonious. Really so harmonious that just a few months ago, for three weeks straight, Leicester experienced ethnic riots. <laughs> where Muslims and Hindus fought running battles in the streets. We are Nelson Road right now, stand up with the Hindu mob. As you can see, look, yes, they're yes, yes, they're yes, So harmonious when Nigel Farage merely stated the fact that England's biggest cities are now minority white British. Former Tory Home Secretary Sajid Javid responded, so what? So what? Like, we're not even supposed to notice it. Strange comment, that, for a man who previously blamed the Labour Party for 13 years of uncontrolled immigration. Self-described communist Ash Sarkar. Because I'm literally a communist. Of course the right fears demographic change. It's going to deliver a progressive majority. But wait, I thought replacement migration was a dangerous right-wing conspiracy theory. Not when they say it. It's okay when they say it. In London, the white British population has decreased by 600,000, while the minority population has increased by 1.2 million. So, yes lads, we're winning. Of course, none of it was a conspiracy theory. The Blair government admitted it was a deliberate plot. Blair's former advisor revealed that they deliberately opened the borders to, quote, rub the right's nose in, you guessed it, diversity, and to flood the country with cheap labour to give Blair an economic boost. They admit it was a deliberate policy to radically change the country forever. And boy, have they done that. For comparison, even when the country had a fraction of the population it has now, the Norman Conquest only reduced the native stock of the population by 5%. Our kids study that at school. It was a major watershed in the history of the British Isles. Yet we see far more significant demographic changes over the last 30 years, primarily caused by mass migration. And we're just supposed to ignore it like it's barely worth even remarking upon. We're supposed to ignore academic studies like this one by the University of Copenhagen that resoundingly concluded diversity isn't a strength, it harms social cohesion and trust. We're supposed to ignore the fact that at the very pinnacle of diversity being a strength in the UK. We also, just by coincidence of course, are now experiencing the highest levels of crime ever recorded. Let's pause there for a word from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Kamikoto Japanese Steel Knives. Look at that beauty. Used by Michelin star chefs around the world, the knives are made with super high quality Japanese steel, using traditional techniques that date back over 800 years. This is the crappy knife I was using before, and this is the Kamikoto Japanese steel knife. Look at that, like a hot knife through butter. Faced with the Kamikoto, that carrot didn't stand a chance. That single bevel edge means Kamikoto knives can achieve an unbelievably sharp edge you just can't get with other knives. Kamikoto is truly the edge lord of the knife world. Wouldn't want to mess with that, would you? Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. The knives come in this lavish, heavy-duty ash wood box, so they make a great gift too. Each Kamikoto knife goes through a rigorous 19-step process, and you can tell just by looking at them that they're top, top quality. Go to kamikoto.com slash pjwatson and enjoy huge discounts with free shipping as part of the biggest sale of the year. And get this, if you use discount code pjwatson, they'll give you an extra $50 discount on any purchase. That's massive. The best way you can support me is by supporting my sponsor. Now back to the video. You'd think all this would be a pretty big story in the UK, right? Not really. But you know what has been dominating the headlines for the last three days straight, this. At a gathering hosted by the Queen Consort, Lady Hasse repeatedly challenged this woman, Ngozi Fulani, a charity founder, to say where she and her people 
were really from. Oh no, the outrage! An 83-year-old woman made some insensitive comments to a black woman. Hold the front page! Yeah, apparently that is more important than the entire demographic of a whole country fundamentally changing. Seriously, the BBC thought that these remarks were of more importance than the fact that people in the UK are now being forced to eat pet food due to the cost of living crisis. And although I didn't experience physical violence, what I feel I experienced was a form of abuse. A form of abuse? Really? She's not asking you where you come from because you're black. She's asking you where you come from because you're dressed head to toe like you come from Africa. Where's traditional dress at an event in a different country from where the dress originates? Gets offended when someone asks where she's from. Being completely honest, if I met Ngozi Fulani, I would be intrigued to ask her about her ancestry, mainly because she has gone the extra mile to make it noticeable. Her whole identity is predicated on her African heritage, to the point where she changed her own name from Mar lean to Ngozi Fulani. Then she thinks she's been abused because someone might dare think she comes from Africa. I feel I experienced was a form of Abuse. And this is the massive scandal that's gripped the nation all week. Later turns out that this woman, of course, is a professional activist who's lobbied on behalf of BLM. She previously decried the royal family as racist, vehemently siding with insufferable race-baiting grifter Meghan Markle, and absurdly accused Charles and Camilla of committing domestic violence against Meghan. During this palace meeting, she claims she was ignored, shoved to the back of the room. Yet here she is holding court, talking to Camilla directly. Abyss. Yeah, there's no agenda here, I'm sure. But don't let any of that stop them from subjecting you to another national white guilt struggle session. Yes, the country that just let in over half a million legal immigrants in the space of a single year. The country that hands any illegal immigrant who can get here free four-star hotel accommodation, free cash and free healthcare. Must be lectured again about how racist it is. There's a full transcript of that conversation with Lady Hussey. She clearly had a tape recorder on her as well. And my view is rather than an 83-year-old woman being thrown to the wolves for doing nothing more than trying to make small talk, polite conversation at a cocktail party, my view is that Falani planned this right from the very start. She's an anti-royal, anti-British Marxist, and it's quite wrong what has happened in the last 24 hours. <laughs> After 60 years of dedicated service to her country, the 83-year-old woman who asked Falani a perfectly reasonable question given the circumstances has been monstered and vilified beyond belief. Here's my question. Why is diversity and inclusivity always predicated on omitting, ostracizing, or publicly shaming white people? Doesn't sound very inclusive to me. That's how white this film is. That's the first thing. The, the, the first red flag you could say as we said, red flag number one, why is nearly everyone white? Oh no, the cast of a British film made 20 years ago is... Wait for it... Mostly white! That's how white this film is. The absolute horror. Red flag number one, why is nearly everyone white? Yeah, it's okay to be white. Another red flag. Red flag, all the couples are straight, where are the gay characters? It's okay to be straight. Is diversity really a strength? Or is it just another glib word, weaponized and deployed to shut down dissent? It's just another word for conformity. It's yeah. the new way of saying conformity. Diversity. You don't see anything diverse anywhere. No. It's all conformity. Really makes you think.